Hey guys, I was getting ready to change out the substrate in my beetle bin. I decided to take the opportunity to make a fun video since I have gotten a lot of comments on Facebook and YouTube about my beetle fortress idea. So these are the previous iterations of their setup. Both were slightly different. The first had only ground hides, which most of the beetles tended to pile together under one or two of them. The second version gave them a second floor with entry holes that they did end up using after they had gotten used to the enclosure. The completed version had two underground tunnels and two above. The tunnels didn't connect. This is what they did to it. Basically dug, ate, or kicked most of the bedding, uncovering the tunnels. But what can I expect? They are beetles. We begin removing hides, taking the beetles off of them as we can, making sure to check the cardboard as to not let one of the beetles loose and have them end up dying. Now we can get a better idea of the size of our colony. Still not very large, but growing. This is the layout for the Beetle Fortress version 3. All of the tunnels are connected this time, so that they have more space to explore. This is something I want to point out and why I do this. See what the beetles are doing? I don't like that, at all. I think it's a bad way to keep them. If they do not have enough hiding spaces, they do this. It took me one to two minutes to lay the toilet paper rolls down in this pattern. They have not noticed it yet, but watch how they are after they settle in. I wanted to change up how I add their food and water this time by placing them together and in the center near entry and exit points. I gave them a few hours to get adjusted and this is where the announcement comes in. I bought an endo cam for the channel which will allow us to see inside the tunnels and record what the beetles do behind closed hides. I used the cam to explore their tunnels and found that the beetles spread out and do not pile together like we saw earlier. They move throughout the system which I assume they are either exploring or looking for a mate which I have found a pair or two breeding in the tunnels before. I've I've also seen that a few will congregate together at the end of the tunnels. However, with a colony of over a hundred, seeing only five or six beetles at most is a good sign that they just don't default to piling on top of each other, and that it is a lack of hiding space that is the reason why we see it sometimes happening. Only a small portion of my colony is ever outside of their tunnels if they are not currently feeding. I have their egg collectors placed around and near exits so the beetles do not have to travel far to lay eggs. I used to keep them all together. Then I tried spacing them out. Spaced out, they tend to favor using whatever piece is closest to the bulk of the colony. So my idea is that since the beetles are more spaced out, they will distribute eggs more evenly amongst the cardboard. There is no particular reason for this, aside from just seeing if it is something that can be controlled or perhaps exploited later on. Perhaps this could also be a way to have more males within your colony without fighting occurring, which this is a problem I am currently facing if I create a ratioed colony. What am I going to do with the excess males? Can I I just put them in my primary colony without causing an issue? I don't want fighting or mutilated beetles. I've considered getting a spider or perhaps a scorpion. I do not really like either of them. However, I didn't like roaches either. My discoids are one of my favorite feeders to handle now. What kind of spider would you guys suggest for the channel? One that would be capable of feeding on Zephobus Moria beetles to thin out my colony of males. Tell me below in the comments. Well guys, that about does it. If you have it in your critter loving heart, give this video a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future. And as always, from the gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.